Hey students, welcome to Swell Academy. Today we're talking about how to identify inverse functions. The general idea is that if we're composing one function of the other, uh, the end result would be x. An inverse is based on the idea that if graphed, it would be reflected along the y equals x uh, linear equation. So if we are able to manipulate our functions to be equal to x, then I guess we're saying that y is equal to x, meaning that it would be graphed over the inverse. So a couple just easy examples of one that one that is. Let's look at just taking, basically taking either either function. For this one, I'll do both and, and substituting in. So we're going to put g of x into x plus 5 here. We're taking this function and putting it into here. Um, so we have f of g of x equal to x minus 5 plus 5. And if you simplify, you end up with x. Now, vice versa, if you're looking at g composed of f of x, you would have had x plus 5 minus 5 x. Uh, you would have also had a result of x. So you see Either way, this is something that is an inverse because ultimately we're able to substitute in and find a function for x. Um, now, maybe one that is not. If I just simply put my g of x into x for here and I end up with f of g of x is equal to 8 times 1 fourth x. 8 over 4x, 2x, my end result is 2x. This is not equal to x, which is what I need it to be for an inverse. If it's going to be an inverse, it's got to be equal to x. Here I have 2x. That's a no bueno. Uh, and so let's just look at a couple examples going forward, given that kind of information, that foundation I have there. Uh, a couple quick ones. I'm not going to continue to write f of x because you guys know how to do that. I'm just simply going to continue to look at taking... And if I have if I have a squared, I like putting it into the square root. Uh, you could do either way, and it's definitely worth experimenting. So we have negative, and then I'm going to put in the x squared plus 6 minus 6. And then you end up with negative x squared, and then you end up with a negative x. Now... We did get an end result of x, yet it was left negative, so this is not an inverse. If this had just been a plus for bidding, that would be an example of something that is an inverse. Uh, what I'll do here is actually put the square root into the square. I'll look at that and what that does. So we have, and, and you can see where it gets negative x plus 6. You have this in here. Um, minus 6 squared and again you kind of combining like terms you end up with the negative squared x squared you end up with the well in this case a negative x times a negative x is equal to positive square root of x squared yeah, so again, we don't we don't get a result of, okay, I was just getting a little sidetracked here looking at this. This is not something we want to look at here. Uh, we just want to focus on the fact that the square root of x squared is negative x, again, not being, not being an inverse. So here's an example of inver uh, two things that are not inverses. Um, here we have one I like. So we're going to put in our g of x into our x. So we'll get f of g of x, and we have x squared plus 8 minus 9. Now, you can see right away that just even simplifying this, even simplifying this can be challenging. Uh, you know, you have basically x plus 8 to the one half. So you can see already we're having a struggle getting 
getting this equal to x. So you could see that even in some functions that you're not even able to soundly simplify this down to a 2x or an x. And that should be a red flag that this is something that's not an inverse. And, and that's kind of why I wanted to bring that up. Like, okay, we're putting x squared plus 8 into the square root of x. How do we simplify that? Well, we can't. Well, that's kind of a dead end then for, for inverses. Let's take a look at another. Uh, this is another good one here. You end up with a 2. Uh, for some reason, it just tend to put g of x into f of x. Maybe it's the alphabetic order, or maybe it's just me liking to put certain things in certain, or a routine that I have as far as me completing my math work. So we have the 2, and again, you're putting this into x. So that's why I put this parentheses here to show you that I'm putting this in here. And then you have the minus 9, and this was all. Now you can see there's, there's are we distributing here? There's, there's a, uh, are we going to do a trinomial? Are we going to expand this? Um, as a, you know, as a, are we going to expand this to a cube, uh, to a, to a root of three? Are we going to cube this? Uh, I don't know. I, I would just say, um, let's look at this. Okay, we have an issue kind of simplifying this. So right away, we're going to look at this as not, not an inverse. Uh, now, one little tool I want to show you, uh, which I think is helpful. Let's say you get an advantage. Okay, so I'm showing you a little Desmos here uh, because this is a good tool to use if you are given a complex function um, such as this where you have negative one-fifth, cube root, fractions, and then they give you a g of x which has quite a few parts to it. So you have two complex functions, uh, time consuming if you're putting one into the other and solving for x, definitely effective if you're using Desmos and you're graphing these two to get a visual. And, and to get just a little note here, to get this cube root here, which I have here, um, you'd have to go to the functions button, you'd have to go to miscellaneous, and then you'd have to find the nth root. Um, and that's how you could put this three variable into square root. Now, if you look at these graphs, they look similar, and don't forget too, I also put in your y is equal to x, your inverse line. If you look at this, you know, we're putting, we're putting our inverse line here, our function for our inverse, and yes, they look somewhat reflective, but one little, little trick you could do here is let's just estimate this to be, to be negative one, four. If this were going to be an inverse line, then I should be able to graph a 1, 2, 3, 4, a 4, negative 1 here. And if you see, I don't have really an intersection at that point. And then you start to see, well, actually, yeah, this kind of extends a little bit before it curves, where this is pretty quick to curve here off the inverse line. So this is a way we could use a graph and, and identify this is something that is not, not inverse. Hope this helps. Uh, questions, comments, put in the comment box, comment box and I can help you. Um, of course, math is, uh, math is tough at times, but you have to learn how to use different ways of uh, graphing, uh, maybe putting the g of x into the f of x or vice versa, f of x and g of x is, if that's not working for you. Uh, so I hope this video is helpful and uh, good luck.